Hello guys, my name is Dima Brook and I'm the CDO of XP Network. Today we're going to get acquainted with the NFT bridge and let's start from the landing page, which is uh, bridge.xp network. Uh, here we will learn how to start using the bridge. Uh, you can see that there are two uh, buttons that you can start working with. One is select departure chain, another is select destination chain. Let's click uh, the departure chain and we will see a pop-up window with multiple chains. Some chains are active, some chains are not. You can see that some chains are under maintenance, some chains are coming soon, and the other chains are active. Uh, we will speak uh, in greater detail about the uh, chains that are under maintenance or coming soon in our next videos, but today we're going to uh, look at the chains that are actively integrated. For example, we can click one of the EVM compatible chains, uh, let's say Polygon. And as a chain of destination, we can choose again for one of the EVM chains or to make it more interesting, let's click Elrond, which is a, an example of a non-EVM chain. The next step, as you can see the button, the blue button has become active now. And the next step is clicking this button. As I click it, I get another pop-up window which allows us to connect the wallet that we will use for injecting our account into the bridge. This allows us to query the blockchain by the public key of this account. And it also allows us to, to sign the transactions on the chain of departure with a private key of this account. As you can see, the bridge supports multiple wallets. Uh, the bridge supports MetaMask, Wallet Connect, Temple Wallet, Beacon, Meyer, My Extension, My Algo, Algo Signer, Tronlink, Sync2, and coming soon are Ledger and Trezor. Uh, Ledger and Trezor are cold wallets. They're physical wallets that uh, allow you to keep your account off chain. All the rest of the wallets are either browser extensions or applications that you can use on your mobile. As you can see, several wallets are active while the rest are inactive. Why does it happen? Does it mean they're not working? Of course not. All of them are working, but the active wallets indicate that they are relevant for the chain of departure, while the inactive wallets indicate that you can't use them for signing transactions from the chain of departure. In our case, the chain of departure is Polygon, which is an EVM chain. This chain is supported by such wallets as MetaMask and Wallet Connect. Therefore, they're active. Let's swap our chains. And now a non-EVM chain, Elrond, is the chain of departure. Let's uh, click send again. And you see that MetaMask and Temple and, and Wallet Connect are no longer active, while Meyer and Meyer extension are the active wallets that are suggested for the user to select. Why do we have two? Well, we're using Meyer for the wallet uh, on the mobile. We're using Meyer for the mobile users, and we're using Meyer extension for the users on a desktop or a laptop. Okay, let's let's stop again, and let's continue bridging. Now I'm clicking MetaMask, and continue bridging again. And what happens is the bridge uh, is showing my NFTs. Uh, this is the account that was injected from the browser extension to the bridge. And uh, this is the list of NFTs that I have on Polygon, which is the chain of departure. Here you can see the chain of destination. If while bridging you decided to send to another blockchain, it's not a problem. You can click, you can click this button. And again, you have a list of available chains of course, the chain of departure will not be available because you're sending from this chain, while all the rest of the chains are available. So for example, if I decided not to send to Elrond because I want to send, let's say, to Velus, there you go. You can send it to Velus. Uh, let's see what other interesting things we have here. For example, uh, every uh, thing that I hover over, we're calling it an NFT card. So if I click one or multiple NFT cards, 
uh, you see that they stack up here. It means that they are selected. You see that I have seven NFTs total and I've selected two NFTs out of the total. I can deselect them here like so, or I can deselect them by clicking on an NFT card again, like so. Another thing that you might have noticed is when I click an NFT, I have a figure here. What is this figure? What is it telling us? It is something connected with the fees. Well, uh, you would be right to, to understand that this is the fees, but actually there are two fees. One fee is that we're paying, there are two fees. One of the fees we're paying on the chain of departure, which is Polygon. This is the fee that the validators of Polygon will collect for changing the storage information on Polygon. Another fee will happen on Velus. This is something that the validators on Velus will charge for changing the storage on Velus. Well, we're sending on Velus, but we are paying in Matic. How is it possible? Well, uh, we cannot be sure that the owner of the NFT on Polygon has tokens of Velus, which is VLX. How can this user bridge? Our bridge will help the user. What we do is we're sending an unsigned transaction to the chain of destination. In this case, it is Velus. And in return, we're getting an estimation of the fee on the target chain. Then we uh, convert the tokens. Then we convert the fee of, on the target chain uh, using USDT stablecoin to the native coins of the chain of departure. In our case, it is Polygon. And voila, you see the estimation in the tokens of the chain of departure. Uh, the next step that you have to take in order to bridge an NFT is you have to provide the address of the receiver and the chain of destination. If you're sending from one EVM to another EVM or any other uh, blockchain with the same protocol, you can reuse the same address that you're sending from. So you can use the same public key like so. So the next step is providing the user address on the chain of destination. The next step is you have to approve this NFT on the chain of departure. What does it do? Approval uh, makes the bridge smart contract the operator of this NFT, which uh, will uh, unlock the next step, which is sending. Uh, let's try and do the approve. So you see, I've selected an NFT. I have the address and once I click to prove, I'm taking to the wallet, right? As you can see, I have to pay a certain amount of tokens for approval. Why? Because we are making a record on the blockchain of uh, departure. You see that the transaction fee has changed a little bit, but that is for the reasons connected with the blockchain. Okay, let us confirm. Okay, again, the fees have changed. It has become more expensive. Okay, I have to press the button quicker not to pay too much. And as you can see, uh, the approving process is going on and the bridge is awaiting uh, for the approval. The next step is sending an NFT to another blockchain, but we'll discuss it on another video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.